Now we're going to look at uh, quality control in SPC. With anything we produce, there's always some type of variation. Um, no matter how accurate we are, there always going to be slightly different. So we say our, our variation as a tolerance, which is normal variation. And what we want is all our products to fall within this normal tolerance. Sometimes the process can skew, so we'll find it's out of range into the process. And sometimes the products are defective because they're outside of the normal. But what we strive to do is get everything within uh, the normal variation. Let's take a look at an example. Say we're work woodworking and we're making tables and we have to measure the length of the legs that go on each table. So every hour we take a sample. We take a sam sample of five legs and measure them. Um, we average those five together and we get the mean, which is also called X bar in statistics, but it's just the average. All right. So over our eight hour shift, these were our eight means. Uh, we add them together at 75. We also take the range. The range is the difference between the smallest and the largest number. So that gives us a range over the uh, uh, eight hours of testing. Okay, the next thing we look at is we have a standard um, chart that gives us some numbers, and I'll show you how to use the numbers in a second. But again, the idea is not to have people perform a lot of calculations, but understand the calculations that are going on. The first chart we're going to look at is called the bar chart. So we need this number here, and this, this chart is in Moodle, and it's also in your book. Uh, that sets the control limits. It's called our A2 here. Uh, now, our subgroup size is we took one measurement every hour for eight hours, but the key is we took a sample uh, size of five legs within that. So we would use the five here because we measured five legs, you know, for each. Um, for each sample. So that's our subgroup size, is how many we had together to get our mean. So this gives us an A2 of 0.577. All right, so we don't have to calculate the numbers. They're given to us in a chart. It's more important to know what they mean. The subgroup size is the number of measurements you average together to get your mean. All right, so now we do the simple calculations. We calculate a center line, which is just our average of our mean, so the average of our average. So we added up our means, <clears throat> and we know that they came to 75. We had eight measurements, so the average of our measurements is 9.375. So that's our center line right down here. <clears throat> we also have to calculate something called R bar, which is the average of our range. If we added up our range uh, over the eight samples, we know that comes to 5.9. We had eight samples. The average is 0.7375. Third thing we do is we calculate the upper and lower control limits. That's our X bar bar, uh, which is our average of our means, our average of our X, uh, average of our averages. We could write this as X bar bar or X bar bar. These two are equivalent. You'll see them depending upon, it's written out a lot of times in paper X bar bar because not many computers have that symbol to put in. Um, but if you have it, this is the preferred way because it's shorthand. But the, the meaning is the exact same thing. So with that, we can calculate our upper control limit. Our X bar bar averages of our averages, we calculated at 9.375. 
from our table, we know that our A2 is 0.577, and we know our RR, or our average of the ranges, is, is 0.7375, so that's 0.98. So that 0.98 gives me my upper control limit. We do the same thing for the lower control limit. We know the, the average of the averages, our average of our means, is 9.375. We got the A2 from the chart, and we calculated the average of our ranges here. So that gives me my lower control limit. Now what I did here is I just plotted out the means of our eight samples over the day. The advantage to this is any worker on the floor can walk by this chart and say, yes, we're in control, because we're within our control limits. Um, and generally, if you start seeing a number up here, then you know you're out of control, and you shut down the process, and you fix what's ever going on. The idea is if you do it quickly, you do not have that many units to rework. You don't let quality infect the system. As soon as it happens, boom, you take care of it. The book gets into a little bit of uh, other things where you watch for trends. Like if all these numbers started trending down, typically you'd shut down the system and recalibrate, because that's telling you if you have more than four or five in one direction, then it's no longer random, that something shifted in your process. But that's a more advanced topic. But right now, let's just worry about keeping them between the upper and lower control limits. Okay, let's look at our same woodworking example now for our ranges, uh, or our chart as it's known. Ooh, there goes the camera. All right, so over here, um, again, I'm going back to our standard table, uh, but I want to highlight one different one. Again, for our woodworking example, we knew that we manufactured, we tested, I'm sorry, five legs per sample. So we're looking at the five here, because that's our subgroup. So make sure you don't take the number of samples, but uh, the subgroup is how many were averaged together to get our mean for each sample is the subgroup size. So that's five. This time we're interested in <clears throat> our uh, D3 and D4. So we want these two factors here. So our D3 is 0, our D4 is 2.114. We'll use those, we'll generate the R chart and show you what it looks like. All right. So again, for our R chart, <clears throat> which is our range chart, our X bar chart was for our means, or our chart is for the range. Um, we take the R bar or the average of the ranges, which is just the sum of the ranges divided by how many of them there are. In this case, it's 5.9 divided by 8, which gives us our 0 0.7375, just like we had before. And that's kind of our center line for the R chart. All right? So next we have to look at the upper and lower control limits. The upper control limit is D4 times our average R, or our R bar. So from our chart, we found that our D4 is 2.114. We know that our average for our R ranges are 0.7375. So that's 1.599. So that's my upper control limit here. My lower control limit, we know D3 was 0, and R average, or R bar, so anything times 0 is 0, so this is my lower control limit. Then I just take uh, uh, my ranges for my samples, or the average ranges, and I plot them out. We can see we're in control, because we're between the control limits, so everything is going fine with our woodworking example here.